Hi all, welcome to Shankar IAS Academy's daily newspaper analysis, 14th November 2024. Before getting to the list of articles, we have certain important announcement from Shankar IAS Academy. Pre-storming UPSC prelims to series 2025 batch 3 starts from 21st November 2024. If you want to join this test series, click the link given below in the description and register yourself in this test series. The another one important announcement is about Chakra Initiative of Shankar IAS Academy which is completely relies on current affairs, which contains 15 current affairs based class and 8 current affairs based test. If you want to know more about this program, we have attached the brochure of Chakra program in description. Do check it. With this information, let us get into the list of articles. The first article which is taken from Indian Express, which talks about NCR's air pollution. The second article which is taken from the Hindu newspaper is about India's Indian Ocean dialogue between US and India after the US presidential election. The third article which is taken from the Hindu newspaper which talks about the Himachal Pradesh chief parliamentary secretary's appointments. The third article which is taken from the Hindu newspaper which talks about the appointment of Himachal Pradesh chief parliamentary secretaries. Without any delay, let us get into the today's article. Look at this article taken from Indian Express which talks about Delhi's air pollution that is Delhi's air quality hit the severe category under air quality index released by Central Pollution Control Board. In this article, we are going to discuss about the causes for the Delhi's air pollutants and its impact on human health and in detail about air quality index released by Central Pollution Control Board. With this information, let us get into the article. First, let us see the major causes for the Delhi's air pollution. The first one is stubble burning which release particulate matters like M, PM2.5 and PM10 which cause lung diseases and create asthma among the population of children and old age people. The second one is vehicular emission. High vehicular density in national capital region which emits nitrogen oxide, carbon monoxide and particulate matters which creates severe smog that leads to that disturbs the transportation of national capital region. The third one is firework and open burning that release toxic gases creating a persistent winter smog that leads to diversion of flights in national capital region. With this, let us see the major pollutants of air pollution and its impact on human health. The first one is particulate matter PM2.5 and PM10 which creates respiratory and cardiovascular diseases and also worsens asthma patients. The second one is nitrogen dioxide. It interferes the airways and increase the risk of respiratory in infections and increase the risk of respiratory infections. The third one is sulfur dioxide which create throat irritation, lung diseases and exaggerate asthma like bronchitis. The another one is carbon monoxide. It is fatal especially those are experiencing heart diseases. The last one is ground level ozone that is O3 which creates respiratory problems worse than asthma and long term exposure risk to lung diseases. With this information, let us let's discuss in detail about air quality index of Central Pollution Control Board. Air quality index which is the standardized system used to measure and communicate the air quality and its impact on health. It is released by Central Pollution Control Board which constituted under Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974 which worked under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and also Central Pollution Control Board developed the National Air Quality Index in 2014 as a part of Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. With this, let us move on to categories of Air Quality Index. Central Pollution Control Board categorized Air quality index based on its range. It has seven ranges with different impacts. Let us see one by one. 0 to 50 represents good air quality, 51 to 100 represents satisfactory air quality, 101 to 200 represents moderate air quality, 201 to 300 represents poor air quality, 301 to 400 represents very poor air quality, 401 to 500 experiencing severe air quality which is now happening in national capital region which can affect healthy people and seriously impact those with heart diseases. To tackle the severe air pollution happening in national capital region, Delhi government took many measures to eradicate this air pollution. Let us see what are they. 
The first one is odd even scheme to reduce traffic and emission during high pollution period, especially during winter season. And the second one is grade and response action plan, which is shutting down constructions and restricting diesel generators. Promotion of e-vehicles. Government offers incentives for e-vehicle purchase and installs charges stations to reduce pollution from traditional vehicles. Anti-drug campaign. Enforces measures to reduce dust pollution such as penalties for non-compliant construction sites. Anti-dust campaign, which enforces measures to reduce dust pollution such as penalties for non-compliant construction sites. The last one is stubble burning control, which works with neighboring states to reduce stubble burning by providing subsidies for crop residues management equipment, which works with neighboring states to reduce stubble burning by providing subsidies for crop residue management equipments. With this information, let's see prelims practice question. Consider the following statement. The Central Pollution Control Board was established under the Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1981. The second statement is the Central Pollution Control Board is under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. The third one is the Central Pollution Control Board is responsible for releasing both the air quality index and water quality index. How many of the above statement or statements are correct? Option A, one only. Option B, two only. Option C, all the three. Option D, none of the above. The answer is answer B, two only. Because Central Pollution Control Board was established under Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974. The third statement also wrong because it was responsible for air quality index and its impact on human health, not for water quality index. With this, let's move on to next article. This article discusses the inaugural US-India Indian Ocean Dialogue, which aims to enhance cooperation between the United States and India in the Indian Ocean region after the presidential election of USA. With this, let's see about Indian Ocean Dialogue in detail. Indian Ocean Dialogue, which is high-level platform for cooperation in Indian Ocean region. Indian Ocean Dialogue is a high-level platform for enhancing cooperation among countries in the Indian Ocean region. And it is a flagship initiative of the Indian Ocean Rim Association, which is established by the 13th Council of Ministers meeting. The Indian Ocean Rim Association was established in 1997. Uh, this Indian Ocean Rim Association vision was originated from Nelson Mandela's visit to India in 1995. This Indian Ocean Rim Association vision was originated from in Nelson Mandela's visit to India in 1995. If we talk about membership, it is open to all sovereign states of the Indian Ocean Rim. The first Indian Ocean Dialogue happened in Kerala. The last year, the IOD was hoisted in San Sibar, Tanzania. From 2001, from 2001, Indian Ocean Dialogue is scheduled every two years by a member states. From 2021, Indian Ocean Dialogue is scheduled to be held biennial by any member states. As of now, there are 23 member countries associated with Indian Ocean Dialogue and Indian Ocean Rim Association. They are the bordering nations of Indian Ocean region. The important members of Indian Ocean Rim Associations are Australia, Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, India, Iran, United Emirates, Somalia, Kenya, Tanzania, Mozambique and South Africa. With this, let's move on to the objectives of Indian Ocean Dialogue. The foremost objective is enhancing regional security. The second one is promoting economic prosperity through trade, maritime resources and sustainable development with the environmental and maritime sustainability and also addressing the emerging threats, including discussions on technologies, advancement, cyber security and climate change impacts. Let's see the India's role in Indian Ocean Dialogue. India position the strategic position. India located centrally in the Indian Ocean, which plays the key role in regional stability with the strategic position. Promoting maritime diplomacy. Promoting maritime diplomacy through, through the platforms like Sagar and Actis policy. The third one is defense and security cooperation, which is ensured by the free and open navigation in Indo-Pacific region. The last one is capacity building. 
India assists smaller Indian Ocean region countries by sharing resources, technologies and training which helping them to manage maritime security and challenges with the help of India. India assist smaller Indian Ocean region countries by sharing resources, technology and training which helps them in overcoming challenges and security threats in Indian Ocean region. With this, let's see the significance of India in Indian Ocean Dialogue. Energy security, economic interest and countering China's influence. That is, strengthening ties with Indian Ocean region nations helps India to counter China's growing presence in the region, particularly through initiatives like the Belt and Road Initiative. With this information, let's try to solve the prelims practice question. Which international association organizes the Indian Ocean Dialogue every year? Option A, Indian Ocean Commission. Option B, Asian Regional Forum. Option C, Indian Ocean Rim Association. Option D, BIMSTIC. The answer is Indian Ocean Rim Association. With this, let's move on to next article. Let's see this article which is taken from the Hindu newspaper which talks about chief parliamentary secretaries. In this article, we are going to see the Himachal Pradesh High Court quashed the appointment of six chief parliamentary secretaries declaring the Himachal Pradesh Parliamentary Secretaries Act 2006 as void for being beyond legislative competence. Let's discuss in detail about Chief Parliamentary Secretaries and their roles and functions. Chief Parliamentary Secretaries are appointed to assist ministers in various functions, including representing the government's stance on issues, supporting administrative tasks and aiding ministers in policy-related issues. They are served as a bridge between Legislative Assembly and the Executive. They are usually appointed by Chief Ministers of the respective states or union territories. When it comes to tenure, they align with that of the government, although it can be ended by the chief minister or if the state legislation governing chief parliamentary secretaries is revoked. As of now, currently this chief parliamentary secretary system was implemented in the states of Nagaland, Arunachal Pradesh and Assam. Let us see the functions and powers of chief parliamentary secretaries. They are helping in policy monitoring, coordinating projects and representing ministers in assembly. They do not have cabinet status or executive power but often receive privileges similar to junior ministers. With this, let us move on to the legal and constitutional issues regarding chief parliamentary secretaries. And the 91st Constitutional Amendment Act 2003 caps the numbers of ministers to 15 percent of the Legislative assemblies send chief parliamentary secretary's role are sometimes seen, seen as a circumventing this cap, raising constitutional concerns. Let us see the legal and constitutional issues related to chief parliamentary secretaries. As per 91st Constitutional Amendment Act 2003, which caps the limit of ministers as 15% in the total strength, this chief parliamentary secretary role overruled this cap and which caused the constitutional concern over the time. And also it violates Article 13 of the Indian Constitution, which states that any law inconsistent with or in derogation of the fundamental rights shall be void. While Chief Parliamentary Secretary's appointment may, may not directly violate fundamental rights, the principle behind Article 13 has been invoked to argue that such appointments go against constitutional limits on executive powers and legislative competence of states. Before concluding this video, I have another important announcement for you, which is about monthly current affairs marathon conducted from Shankar AIS Academy, which is uploaded in YouTube. This initiative will help you to crack the preliminary examination. In second week of every month, monthly current affairs marathon will be posted on the channel. Do check it. If you like this video, hit, hit like, do comment and do not forget to subscribe the Shankar IS Academy's YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.